Welcome back, Scouts, for Activity 10, Cooking at Home and Making Apple Crisp. Hempel, Camino Real, Blanco Vista Elementary, and all others are welcome. We are glad you looked in on our Scout pages. Since we are all home more now, these Scout activities are created for fun at home and keeping Scouting alive during these times of COVID-19. Please join me in the Scout Oath. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country, and to obey the Scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. Please join me in the Scout law. A Scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. A scout is brave. A scout can face danger, although he is afraid. He has the courage to stand for what he thinks is right, even if others laugh at him or threaten him. A scout is brave. Show the Cub Scout sign. Tell what it means. Make the sign with your right hand. Hold your arm straight up. The two raised fingers stand for the Scout Oath and the Scout Law. The fingers look like the sharp ears of the wolf, ready to listen to Akela. Remember, Akela means good leader to a Cub Scout. Your mother or father or guardian is Akela. So is your Cub Master or your den leader. At school, your teacher is Akela. Show the Cub Scout handshake. Tell what it means. When you shake hands with another Cub Scout, do this. Hold out your right hand, just as you always do to shake hands. But then, put your first two fingers along the inside of the other boy's wrist. This means that you help each other to remember and obey the Scout Oath and Scout Law. Say the Cub Scout motto. Tell what it means. The Cub Scout motto is do your best. A motto is a guiding principle and a rule for living. Do your best means trying your hardest, not just a little bit. Do your best all the time. Do your best in school and at home. Do your best when you play a game and help your team. Do your best as you work on your rank adventures. Show the Cub Scout salute. Tell what it means. Salute with your right hand. Hold your first two fingers close together. Touch your fingertips to your cap. If you aren't wearing a cap, touch your right eyebrow. You salute the flag to show respect to our country. Always use the Cub Scout salute when you are in your Cub Scout uniform, both indoors and outdoors. If you are not in uniform, you salute the flag by placing your right hand over your heart. I like scouting because it gives me an opportunity to get out and hang out with my friends. Bear requirement five, wolf requirement six. Demonstrate what it means to eat a balanced diet by helping to plan a healthy menu for a meal for your family, making a shopping list of the food used to prepare the meal. Exercise helps keep us strong. So does choosing nutritious food from the five food groups. You don't have to have food from each group at every meal, but you should try to choose foods from each group every day. Talk with your parent or guardian about how you can eat a balanced diet. With his or her help, plan a healthy meal for your family. There are five food groups, fruits, vegetables, grains, dairy, and protein. You know what fruits and vegetables are. Grains are foods like rice, wheat, oats, cornmeal, and barley, just to name a few. Bread, pasta, and oatmeal are all foods made from grains. The dairy group includes milk, yogurt, and cheese. 
Meat is chicken, fish, eggs, nuts, and beans are all in the protein group. Here are some tips to help you plan a good nutritious meal for your family. Eat more fruits and veggies. Make half of your plate fruits and vegetables every day. Try whole grains. Ask for oatmeal, whole wheat breads, or brown rice at meals. Rethink your drink. Drink fat-free or low-fat milk or water instead of sugary drinks. Focus on lean protein. Choose protein foods like beans, fish, lean meats, and nuts. Slow down on the sweets. Eat sweets like cakes or cookies once in a while and in small amounts. When I was a Wolf Scout last year, our den leader challenged us to replace our bad habits with good habits. Now, instead of sitting on the couch, my friends and I play outside whenever we can, and my mom also stopped buying sugary drinks, and I don't even miss them. How will you get moving, Wolf? Plan your menu for lunch or dinner. Make a shopping list. Once you've helped cook one meal, plan and prepare another one. Try something different and more challenging this time. Requirement 3. Plan a menu for a balanced meal for your den or family. Determine the budget for the meal. Shop for the items on your menu while staying within your budget. Great meals don't just happen. Somebody has to plan them. Work with your family or other members of your den to plan a delicious breakfast, lunch, or supper. Remember to include three different food groups if possible. Make a shopping list and decide how much money you can spend. Then head to the grocery store and start shopping. Work to stay within your budget by checking prices as you go. If you need to make adjustments, that's okay. The Scout is flexible. Okay, that's not in the Scout law, but it's still true. A Scout is thrifty. You can show that you are thrifty by finding ways to save money when shopping. Here are some things to consider when you go shopping. Store brands are often less expensive than brands you see advertised on TV or online. Foods you make from scratch usually cost less and are tastier than processed foods. You should compare the price of fresh, canned, and frozen fruits and vegetables to find the best price. To be really sure you're getting the best deal, compare the price per ounce of different products. Sample camp menu. Breakfast. Eggs in a bag. For each scout, crack one or two eggs into a sealable, quart-sized plastic bag. Add one tablespoon milk and other ingredients. Bacon bits, cheese, chopped green pepper, chopped onions, salt, pepper to taste. Seal the bag, removing excess air, and then shake it. Don't shake it before you seal it. Place the bag into boiling water and cook for three or four minutes or until fully cooked. Use tongs to remove the bag from the hot water. Fruit salad. Cut up apples, bananas, oranges, grapes, or other favorite fruit. Mix together and toss with a little lemon juice to prevent browning. Biscuits. Arrange canned Biscuits on a metal plate or pie pan. Carefully place the plate on several rocks in the floor of a preheated Dutch oven. Cook until golden brown. Juice and milk. Lunch. Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Carrots, apples, and juice boxes. Dinner. Dutch oven pizza. Spread pizza dough on a metal plate. Cover with pizza sauce, sauteed vegetables, cooked meat, cheese, and other favorite toppings. 
anchovies, anyone? Carefully place the plate on several rocks in the floor of a preheated Dutch oven. Cook until cheese is melted and crust is golden brown. Salad, drinks, s'mores. Roast a large marshmallow on a skewer over hot coals. Add a square of chocolate and sandwich between two graham crackers. Delish. Set personal nutritional goals. Keep a food journal for one week. Review your journal to determine if the goals were met. Do you know what a balanced diet is? No, it doesn't mean resting a plate on your head. (laughs) It means eating the right assortment of foods so you get all the nutrients you need for good health. For example, the calcium in milk and yogurt makes your bones strong. The vitamin A in carrots and dark leafy greens helps you to see well. The protein in meat, nuts, and beans helps your body repair cells and make new ones. Find your balance between foods and physical activity. Eat grains, vegetables, fruits, dairy, proteins every day. Be physically active for at least 60 minutes each day. These amounts of foods listed above are for Weeble Scouts who weigh 60 pounds and need to take in 1,600 calories per day. You can adjust the total if you weigh more or less. If you go to www.choosemyplate.gov, it shows how much of the five food groups you should eat every day. It helps if each meal contains at least three of the five food groups and each snack contains two groups. What about sweets and other treats, you ask? Save those for special occasions and for after you've eaten the foods you need. When I did this adventure myself, I decided to try eating fish for the first time. It was delicious. Who knew? After you've looked at the chart, talk with your parents or den leader and set some personal nutritional goals. For example, you might decide to eat more vegetables, cut back on red meat, or try something you've never eaten such as kumquats or kiwis or clementines. Those are all fruits, by the way, and they taste great. Keep track of everything you eat for a whole week to see whether you've met your goals. Requirement 1A. Create your own bear cookbook using at least five recipes you can cook or prepare either on your own or with some adult help. Include one page with information about first aid. You should include one recipe for a breakfast item, one for lunch, and one for dinner, and two recipes for nutritious snacks. How does a new chef get started? With a recipe, of course. There are many places you can look for recipes. Here are some of them. Family. Ask your family members about things they like to cook. Some families hand down recipes from generation to generation. Your parents or grandparents may have cookbooks they have used for many years that you can borrow. People from other countries. Do you have friends and neighbors who came to the United States from other countries? Do you have family members who live in another part of the world? Different cultures often have very different styles of food that are fun to try. The library. Your local library probably has cookbooks you can borrow. You may even find cookbooks designed just for kids like you. Newspapers. Many newspapers have a food section with recipes. Magazines. Ask your family, neighbors, or other adults you know if they have magazines with recipes you can look through. Television. There are several television networks that have shows dedicated to food and recipes. The Internet. With the help of an adult, you can research recipes on the Internet. You'll be surprised at how many different recipes you can find for the same food item. Food Packages. Check cereal and baking mix boxes for recipe suggestions. Other Cub Scouts. Ask your friends what they like to eat and how they cook it. 
you can exchange recipes with your friends. You, you can create your own recipes by experimenting with flavors, seasonings, and cooking methods. Start with a few basic ingredients and then add other ingredients to make your recipe. Be sure to keep notes as you are creating so you will remember what you did. Don't be afraid to try new things. After you have gathered your recipe, put them in a book that you can use at home or take on a camp out. One way to do that is to write each recipe on a 4 by 6 index card. Make front and back covers out of heavy cardboard. Punch two holes along the upper edge of each card and each cover. Then use string or a shoelace to tie the book together. Be sure the holes are in the same places on each card. Cover the front and back with fabric and glue, stickers, or your own original artwork. Here's a recipe for apple crisp. It serves eight and the cooking time is 35 minutes. Ingredients, you're going to need eight apples peeled, one and a half cups brown sugar, one cup flour, one cup oats, one teaspoon cinnamon, one teaspoon nutmeg, a half cup of butter, one tablespoon lemon juice. You preheat the oven to 375 degrees. Mix the apples with the lemon juice until well coated. The lemon juice keeps the apples from turning brown. Spray a 13 by 9 inch baking dish with cooking spray. Spread the apples in the bottom of the dish. Mix the remaining ingredients together in a medium sized bowl until crumbly. Spread over the apples. Bake at 375 degrees for 35 minutes. It's delicious. Bear Handbook, page 64 and 65, Requirement 1C. Go on a grocery shopping trip with your den or with an adult. Check the price of different brands of one single item and compare the price of a ready-made item with the price of the same item you would make yourself. A big part of learning to cook is learning to shop for groceries. Whether you shop at a big grocery store or a farmer's market, it is important to buy the right foods and manage your money wisely. When you go to the grocery store, you will see many types of the same item. You may see six different types of apples, five brands of pancake syrup, and several sizes of milk. Prices will vary depending on the size of the package, the brand, and whether the store is running a sale. Look at several containers of the same item that are the same size. Do they all cost the same? Which one is the best to buy? Use the chart below to help you decide. While you are at the grocery store, compare the cost of a ready-made food item with a similar item you would make at home. Ready-made means the food has already been prepared. All you have to do is cook it up or heat it up. Pizza is a good item to compare. You can buy a ready-made frozen pizza. You can have a pizza delivered to your home or you can make it from scratch. Write down the cost of each kind of pizza here. Try to compare pizza that serve the same number of people and have similar toppings. For example, homemade pizza, you would have a pre-made crust, sauce, cheese, toppings, and a total cost. A frozen pizza would just have a single total cost, and a delivery pizza would just have a single total cost. Which pizza would cost less? Did the answer surprise you? Besides the cost, why might you choose one pizza over the others? One important consideration is the ingredients in ready-made food. When you make food yourself, you can make decisions about the ingredients you eat. Thinking about healthy choices as well as your budget is part of grocery shopping. Discuss what you learned with members of your family or your den. Requirement 2A. With the help of an adult, select one food item and follow a recipe to prepare it for your family in your kitchen. Clean up after the preparation and cooking. You can choose all sorts of food items to prepare at home. Here are some examples. Breakfast, French toast or scrambled eggs. Lunch, tuna, 
chicken salad or grilled cheese sandwich. Dinner, spaghetti with sauce or tacos. Pick one of these items or something else to prepare. Talk with everyone about how they liked what you cooked and decide what you would do differently next time. The box is for you to write what you cooked and the date you cooked it. You may decide you want to make changes to your recipe the next time. Maybe there wasn't enough food to go around. Maybe the food was too spicy or not spicy enough. Write down the changes you would make so you remember them next time. Finally, be sure to clean up the kitchen and all the pots, pans, and utensils you used. Remember that a scout is clean. Requirement 2B. With the help of an adult, select one food item and follow a recipe to prepare it outdoors for your family or den. Clean up after the preparation and cooking. In many ways, cooking outdoors is just like cooking indoors. You can really cook anything at camp that you can cook at home. But there are some additional questions to think about. What will the cooking source be? Will it be charcoal in a fire ring, a grill, or a camping stove? All of these methods require the help of an adult. Is there water nearby for easy cleanup? How will you get the food to the cooking site? How do you need to adjust the cooking times and methods? Here are some ideas for each meal. Breakfast, oatmeal or pancakes. Lunch, grilled hot dogs or soup. Dinner, boiled dinner or English muffin pizza. See the following recipes. English muffin pizza. You will need one English muffin split into two pieces. Spread pizza sauce on both halves. Add any ingredient to the top that you like and cover with cheese. Place your pizzas on a piece of heavy-duty foil and turn the edges of the foil up or place them in a pan covered with foil. Have an adult help you place the foil on a heated grill. Watch carefully. Once the cheese has melted, your pizza should be ready to eat. Foil dinner. Cooking in foil packs is a fun way to cook meat, vegetables, and even fruit over hot coals. Plus, the cleanup is easy. Start with a square piece of heavy-duty aluminum foil. A square sheet that is the width of the roll will work fine. Lay the foil shiny side up on the table and smear a little butter or margarine on it. Put a hamburger patty on the foil and then add sliced potatoes, carrots, onions, broccoli, or whatever else sounds good. The vegetables should all be cut to about the same thickness to help them all cook evenly. Season with salt, pepper, garlic salt, or your favorite herbs. Sprinkle with a little water, maybe two or three teaspoons full. Fold the foil edges up over the food. Fold them down once, crease gently, then fold down again and crease. Now, do the same thing with the open ends of the foil pack. The idea is to seal the moisture in the package. Try not to rip the seams, but if you do, finish wrapping, then repeat with another layer of foil. Cook the foil pack for 20 to 30 minutes over white hot coals, turning once. Ask an adult to take the foil pack off the coals. Be careful when you open the foil pack because a lot of steam comes out. Foil cooking times. You can cook many foods in foil packs. Here are approximate cooking times for some of them. The depth of the charcoal bed, the temperature of the food, and the size of the food will affect the cooking times. A hamburger, 15 to 20 minutes. A hot dog, 5 to 10 minutes. Pork chops, 30 to 40 minutes. 
Whole potatoes, 45 to 60 minutes. Whole apples, 20 to 30 minutes. My brother and I love making mini pizzas with veggie designs on top. I'm quite a pizza artist. For more foil dinner ideas online, just search foil dinners. Guys, this is part two of where we're going to cook it and then we're going to eat it. So this equals a really healthy dinner because we have vegetables, we have our protein, and we have our drinks. This is a really healthy Guys, dinner. My sister just joined, so now first thing to do, we need to grab some potatoes. You see these are really dirty, so we need to go wash them and then we can peel the skin off. So let's go. And if you like the skin, then that's okay. Hey guys, now we're going to start peeling the carrots, but make sure, don't get it on yourself. Make sure to rinse the carrots or else you will get sick. Guys, I'm here to cut the onion. I just finished cutting the onion and I'm determined not to cry. I'm cutting the potatoes. I'm cutting the carrots. And I'm cutting the onions. Don't cut off your fingers, be careful. Make sure to cut the potatoes thin so that they easily cook in the fire. Carrots are really fun to cut. These sure make me I cry. I the meat and the vegetables together because you can get really sick. But in this meal, we're going to mix it together and it equals a... My grandpa said cream of mushroom soup is really good, so we're going to try it. Why is this called a tinfoil dinner? Because it... Because you need you have two layers of layers of foil. Nine. A little handful of potatoes. A little handful of some carrots. We can add some corn. Onions. You can grab this. You can just. Cool. Guys, you can you can season it any way you want with salt and pepper, and so that's how you make a ten pound dinner. Mm -hmm. This is really yummy. Yummy, 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 yummy. yummy. Cooking First Aid. Here is some first aid information to add to your cookbook. Write this information on an index card or have an adult make a photocopy that you can cut out and glue onto a, an index card. Anytime a member of your den or family is injured, tell an adult first. Cooking First Aid. Minor burns or scald. A burn happens when your skin touches something hot. A scald happens when your skin comes in contact with hot steam. Both can be painful and need some first aid attention. If the skin is unbroken, run cool water over the area of the burn or soak it in cool water, not ice water. Keep the area under the water for at least five minutes. A clean, cold, wet towel will also help reduce pain. Show the burn area to an adult. Minor cut. Small cuts on the skin can allow bacteria to enter the body and cause infection. Wash minor cuts with soap and water. Apply antibiotic ointment and cover with a dry, sterile dressing or an adhesive bandage to help prevent infection and protect the wound. Before applying a bandage, show the cut to an adult. Clean and bandage wounds each day. If the cut is more serious, get help from an adult immediately. Taking proper care of a wound will help prevent other health issues like an infection. Requirement 1B. Prepare for cooking by explaining the importance of planning, tool selection, and cooking safety. You've collected your recipe and you're ready to roll, right? Before you start opening packages and mixing things up, you need to understand a few things. These things will help you be the best cook you can be. Planning. Do these things first. Decide what you want to cook and find a recipe. Read the recipe all the way to the end. Now read it again. Make sure you have plenty of time and you understand what to do. 
If the recipe is hard to understand, ask an adult for help. Check your pantry and refrigerator to make sure you have all the ingredients you need. It's hard to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich if you don't have any peanut butter. Check your pans and utensils to make sure you have the right ones. Some recipes call for special tools, such as a cookie cutter or a mixer. Consider food allergies. If you are cooking for other people, ask them about any food allergies they have so you don't prepare something that will make them sick. Wash your hands and make sure your work surfaces are clean. Wipe down surfaces with soapy water and rinse them off. A scout is clean. Food safety is the most important part of cooking. It's even more important than dessert. Cooking tools. Depending on what you are going to cook, you may need some of these tools. A kitchen spoon. This is a large version of the spoon you eat cereal with. Some have slots in the bowl to drain liquid. Whisk. This tool lets you whip egg whites or scramble eggs. Can mixer or electric mixer, these tools make it easier to mix ingredients. Blender or food processor, this tool mixes liquids together. It may also have a setting to chop ingredients. Kitchen knife, this tool is used to cut up ingredients like fruit and vegetables. Measuring cups, these tools let you measure ingredients. When a recipe calls for two cups of flour or a half cup of milk, Grab your measuring cups. Measuring spoons. These tools are similar to measuring cups, but they measure small amounts like teaspoons and tablespoons. Cooking terms. Here are some words you may see in recipes. Stir. Combine ingredients until they look smooth and are all one color. Batters. Cake, cupcake, pancake. Should usually not be lumpy, but check the recipe to be sure. Mix. Combine wet ingredients, eggs, milk, butter, etc., and dry ingredients, flour, salt, baking soda, to form a batter. You can do this with a whisk or a mixer. Beat. Mix quickly to make the mixture smooth and light. Blend. Make a very smooth liquid with no lumps. The mixture should look like a runny milkshake or smoothie. Chop. Cut ingredients into smaller pieces with a knife on a cutting board. Ask for help from an adult with this so you don't cut yourself. Bake. Cook the food in an oven. Preheat the oven to the right temperature before putting the food in. An adult can help you with this step. Fry, saute, or brown. Cook something in a skillet on the stovetop. Heat a little oil in the pan first to keep the food from sticking. Cooking safety. Stoves and ovens can cause serious burns. Steam from pots can scald your skin. And sharp tools can cause cuts. Also, if you handle food the wrong way, people can get sick. Follow these rules to keep yourself and the people who will eat your food safe. Request permission to use the kitchen and know your family's safety rules before using anything in the kitchen. Have a first aid kit nearby in case you hurt yourself. Ask an adult for help when you need to use a knife, the stovetop, or the oven. Wear shoes in case you drop a heavy pan or a glass bowl or a measuring cup. Keep work surfaces and your hands clean. Wash your hands before you start cooking, after you handle raw meat, and when you are done cooking. Clean up your pots and pans, utensils, and work surfaces once you have finished. Wash your dishes or place them in the dishwasher. When you become a Boy Scout, you will work with your patrol, which is similar to a den, to plan your meals, do the shopping, and prepare and cook them as a group. Requirement 1B, play a game of Go Fish for Tens. This is just like regular Go Fish, except the goal is to get two cards that add up to 10. Use a regular deck of cards, 
but take out all the tens and face cards. Aces count as one. Start with five cards and put the extra cards face down on the table. If you have a pair of cards that add up to 10, put them down in front of you. When it's your turn, ask one player for a card that you can add to one of your cards to make 10. If he has the card you asked for, put down the pair and take one card from the deck. If he doesn't have a card, take the card from the deck. Your turn is over when you can make no more pairs that add up to 10. The game ends when someone runs out of cards. You might need two decks of cards if there are more than five players. A scout is thrifty. If you don't have playing cards, you can make your own deck with 36 index cards. To do this, put one number on each card, starting with number one, continue to the last card, which will be number nine. Repeat three more times. 36 cards total. Join us next time for Activity 11, Outdoor Cooking, Campfire Jokes and Skits, and S'mores in a Bag. If you are interested in joining a pack near you, visit beascout.scouting.org.